So last time we talked about the expected value of a random variable, and today I want to talk about what's called the variance of a random variable, which is another derived quantity that's super useful in practice. So variance of a random variable. So to kind of motivate the idea, let me draw a few different PMFs. So I have minus one or plus one, each with probability a half. I have minus 100 and plus 100 with probability a half. I have, say, a uniform random variable centered around zero with each probability being one fifth. Uh, let's talk about a constant. So this constant is at zero and has probability one, right? So all of these are random variables that have mean or expected value equal to zero, right? But as we can see, they're all very different. So just telling you the expected value of a random variable isn't really enough information to really characterize what's going on there. So what makes these random variables different is kind of, for one thing, how spread apart they are from the mean, right? So this is not spread apart at all, whereas this is like super spread apart. And that's what the variance encapsulates. It's basically a measure of how far away do we expect the random variable to be from its mean, okay? So let's write that down in a formal way. So you see it's called var of x, and it's defined as the expected value of x minus the expected value of x squared. A little bit confusing to have this uh, double e of x, but this is actually not that confusing if we kind of write it like this, where, like we talked about before, sometimes you see this notation mu is e of x. Here, maybe this is a little bit easier to understand. Mu is a constant, right? I'm just asking, what's the expected value of how far away x is from that constant? And the reason I square it is so I always get a positive number, right? I don't care about whether it's you know, this way or that way. I only care about the distance from the mean, OK? I can also write this out so I can say expected value of x squared minus 2x mu plus mu squared. And I know from my um, properties of expected value, Again, mu is a constant, and so is 2, so I have 2 mu e of x plus e of mu squared, which is, again, just a constant. So I have mu squared. I have 2 mu e of x is also mu, and then I have e of x squared. So what I see here is I actually have e of x squared minus mu squared, or the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, okay? And so this bottom one is sometimes a handier way to compute the variance, okay? And it's also important to note that these two things are not the same thing, right? Otherwise, every random variable would have variance zero, and that's a common beginning probability mistake is to compute that this is the same as that, but it's not, okay? Um, so sometimes you'll see this called sigma squared, And you'll also see sigma by itself. This is called the standard deviation of x. And so I'm sure if you've ever done any sort of statistics, you've computed probably the mean and the standard deviation of a bunch of numbers in the same way we can compute the mean and the standard deviation of a random variable. OK? So again, the idea is that bigger variances or bigger standard deviations, standard deviations mean that the random variable is spread further apart from its expected value. And so to make this a little more concrete, let's just do an example. So remember uh, a couple of lessons ago, we played this great game about um, I had a payout of a certain amount, and I computed that the expected value of that random variable was 2. Okay. So let's refresh our memory. We have this PMF. I had 0 with probability 1 eighth, 1 with probability 3 quarters, and 10 with probability 1 eighth. And we computed the expected value of this was 2. Okay. So what is the variance of this random variable? There are a couple ways I could go about it, right? So I could go straight out from the definition, which says, the expected value of x minus the mean squared. In this case, it's like saying the expected value of x minus 2 squared. So this is like saying, OK, well, with probability 1 eighth, I have 
0 minus 2 squared, right? Negative 2 squared. With probability uh, 3 quarters, I have 1 minus 2 squared, which is negative 1 squared. And with probability 1 eighth, I have 10 minus 2 squared, which is 8 squared. So I have uh, 4 eighths plus 3 quarters plus 64 eighths, which I guess is just 8, right? So if I add this up, I get 8 and a half, so I get 9 and a quarter. Okay, so that's pretty easy to compute directly. Or I could compute it with the version like this. I could say, what's the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, right? So I already know that this is 2 squared, okay? What I don't know is this expected value of x squared. So that's an easy thing to compute, right? Referring back to my picture, I have uh, probability uh, 1 eighth of getting 0 squared. I have probability 3 quarters of getting 1 squared. And I have probability an eighth of getting 10 squared. So I have, this is 0, I have 3 quarters plus 100 over 8, which is some messy thing, 53 over 4. And so that means that my variance of x is 53 over 4 minus 4, which is 53 over 4 minus 16 over 4, which is 37 over 4, which is the same 9 and a quarter that I got earlier, right? So, I mean, depending on the way the problem is set up, one way of doing this may be easier to compute than the other, but you're always going to get the same answer, so it doesn't really matter that much, okay? Um, and then I can talk about this in a more symbolic way. So, for example, the Bernoulli random variable. Remember that this was basically uh, 0 with probability 1 minus p and 1 with probability p, and the expected value of this is p. What is the variance? Well, I can do this in a couple ways. I could say, what's the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. Well, again, this I know is p squared. This I have to compute. Well, it's uh, 0 squared times 1 minus p plus 1 squared times p. So what I have is p minus p squared, or a different way of writing this is p times 1 minus p. Okay. What is the expected value of some other stuff that we know? So the geometric random variable. Again, this is going to be a more complicated one, right? We know that the expected value of this, we found out was 1 over p from a previous derivation. Expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Well, we have to compute this, right? What is this? This is going to be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k squared times the PMF. And this is like an awful thing to want to compute, right? So this, again, is something where I could go through the derivations and, you know, I could come to an answer, but it may not be very satisfying. The actual answer is um, overall 1 minus p over p squared. I'm not going to waste the, the bandwidth on doing the infinite sums and so on. In practice, you know, when you're taking a, you know, a homework problem with me, I don't really mind if you use a table like this, right? So here, this is a table of common distributions. So here we just computed that the Bernoulli, we knew it had mean p, and I computed it had variance p times 1 minus p. We were talking about the geometric. This is what I just derived. Uh, well, I didn't derive this. I just told you this is what the answer was, right? Um, and then we've got other things we know, like Poisson, binomial, right? So, you know, it's okay if, you use this table on the homeworks. I mean, it depends on your professor and your homework. I mean, I may or may not let you use it on the exam, but usually my my pedagogical point is not to make you slog through a whole bunch of infinite sums. It's to understand innately how you can use these existing random variables to compute uh, means and variances of derived random variables. And so um, that's about it for today. And we'll talk about a new concept next time called the cumulative density function, CDF.